voices of a talking to you still Telling you now what you want to hear When presents lie, when the world stood still Can you hear me? Bobby, was it absolution? Are you feeling kind of proud? Bobby, did I ever tell you that you talk too much? Talk too loud. Can you hear me? Hi, this is Nick from Music for the Head and Heart, and I'm with Boo and Andy. Hello. Good to see you today Hi. on this sunny day in Yorkshire. Yeah. So, I know uh, you both started playing together, albeit recently. Very recently. Very recently, under the name Boo Sutcliffe. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been doing a bit longer, and he's joined me in the last uh, few weeks, really. Yeah. So, so how did you guys uh, come to be playing together? Well, are you going to we were brought together by our, our wives, actually, our wives and girlfriends, the wags in our lives, uh, who uh, work together. And uh, I'd been so sort of, I used to have a band and was sort of playing a lot of solo stuff, and uh, but always interested in sort of getting a different instrument in and trying things out in different ways. And uh, Andy, aside from playing numerous different things, is a fiddle player. And uh, I think we got talking on a, on a dog walk, didn't we, as well? Yeah? We've also got cockapoos. Ah! <laughs> and we, we went to a cockapoo party type thing, didn't we? We did, yeah. We it was a cockapoo meet with like, hundreds of cockapoos running around. And, uh, Some sort of the secret sort of gorgeous yeah. cockapoos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good, yeah. Yeah, so we so, were chatting, didn't we? And uh, yeah, music kind of came up and... Uh, yeah, I mean, Andy's a sort of trained musician, so he's a sort of opposite of me, really, and uh, he has a degree in music, which, uh, which is great in many ways. Obviously, it's terrible because he knows when I'm out of tune and things like that, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it does have its uses, definitely, yeah. So and I keep throwing other instruments at him, and uh, he seems to do pretty good with most of them as well, so. Well, now you're a fiddle player, and also, I think you uh, said uh, before the interview, a flute player as well? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I dabbled keyboards as well, but uh, not quite as proficient. But yeah, fiddle was my first instrument, and like like Boo says, I've you know classically trained, uh, not played for, for for quite a while. Done a little bit of kind of Cayley band, right? And, and that style of music, but this is a, a bit of a departure for me to uh, you know to play with with a singer songwriter. The crazy thing is, he's actually played with with the, the only famous Boo is Boo Hewitt, isn't uh, it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. he only ah. plays with people called Boo. That's the uh, yeah. that's the clear yeah. message here. Huh? Yes, I played a few times with Boo Hewitt. Eh? And, uh, and I've also played with a bit of, uh, an American band called Richmond Fontaine. Right. Uh, uh, Willie, Willie Vlartin, the, the, the lead singer from, from them as well. So I, I kind of blagged my way onto a, onto a gig of theirs <laughs> uh, when they first came across to the UK and um, played a couple of times then later on with them as well. So when did, when did you play with Boo Herodin? Uh, what? It's a, it's a long story. I don't know whether you want me to tell the whole thing, but... Uh, but as, as a present for my 40th birthday, which is a long time ago, uh, we decided that we would, we would attempt uh, to, uh, to buy Boo, basically, as a, as a, as a 40th birthday present for me. Uh, so we, we went to see him at, a, at, at one of his gigs, uh, approached him, uh, made a pitch, basically, for him to come and, uh, and, come and play at my, at my party with the addition of uh, myself and some of my friends forming a band mm. uh, and, and playing with him. Uh, and that, that happened, uh, he had an absolutely fantastic time uh, and he invited myself and, uh, and the bass player uh, to, to come and play with him at, uh, at kind of numerous gigs over, so whenever he was playing locally right. uh, over the next few years we, we probably played with him at least half a dozen times uh, and he just used to kind of randomly get us up on stage because uh, he knew that we knew all this stuff, so he was, yeah. he was kind of you know confident enough in us as musicians to get us up on stage and, uh, and Played sort of two or three songs with him. Uh, and he's, he's good as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good yeah, player, good song, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's done a lot with Eddie Reader, written a lot of songs for Eddie Is he in Nashville now? No, no, he's, 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 he's based in the UK. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So, at the moment, you what's your sort of writing process or rehearsal process? How are you uh, <laughs> working together? Well, I, I suppose, I mean, I write the songs, I always, I've got lots of songs that I've written there. Uh, Mainly the last few years, actually, I kind of had a couple that we, uh, well, that I did when I suppose when I was a kid, you know, when I was sort of eighteen-ish, and uh, 
usually I couldn't, I couldn't really finish anything. And I always had this kind of thing where I just never could finish a song. And I was a drummer back then, so it didn't really matter. You know, I just kind of sat at the back and, you know, had a great time, you know. But uh, I always had this thing about trying to sort of, you know, finish off these songs and do something that, 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 that yeah, I suppose you all want to satisfy yourself, don't you? And that was the hard bit, getting something that I liked myself. And uh, so I left it a couple of decades, you know, with uh, whatever happened in those two decades. And uh, I then sort of came back to it, bumped into an old mate of mine who invited me around for a jam. And uh, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to finish a song now. I can't just turn up with a sort of, you know, half, half written song again. And uh, so I did, you know, all I needed was a deadline, really. And, uh, and I've written about another, I don't know, another sort of 20, 30 odd in the last kind of few years. And uh, some of them I even quite like, you know. <laughs> well, Aaron Copeland famously was, when asked about what was inspiration for music, famously mentioned to a good friend of mine in New York, uh, there's nothing more inspirational than a deadline. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, that's it. I mean, uh, I did the same. When I had the band together, it was the same. I'd, I'd suddenly realised that all the songs were too slow, I too quiet, I need a few, you know, livelier ones, gig on, on Saturday, so I'd write a few songs for it, you know, and it's, uh, it's amazing how you can do it, I suppose, you know, but it's an odd thing in songwriting, isn't it? You, you have to, uh, I think you just have to be present so that when the inspiration strikes, you're sort of there and you're ready, you know. It is about inspiration, I think, but uh, it's also about hard work and just putting in the time and making sure that you're there when, uh, you know, when, when the mood takes you is pretty important, really, isn't it? So what, in the song game about inspiration, what sort of things, people, places inspire you to actually start writing stuff? And is it uh, music comes first, lyrics comes first, or what? what's the... Typical process. It's a very good question, to which I don't really have an answer, but uh, I think, I mean, I wouldn't be alone, I think, in saying that sort of generally pressing around on the guitar is how it all starts, you know, so kind of noodling around, uh, just sort of, you know, letting your fingers do whatever they want to do, I suppose, is how it starts, isn't it, I think, and, uh, and I, think, I think I know a few people who are the same, really, and then from there, you just kind of, you either like it or you don't, or you realise that you're playing somebody else's song or whatever, which, you know, does happen. Uh, and then, I don't know, I always find that just, just some, some sort of, usually a line or an idea just sort of pops into your head and, uh, and then it will usually stay there for several weeks, months, years, decades in some cases. And, uh, and then there's a time when I, I find it very difficult sort of writing the lyrics. I think lyrics are, uh, it's, it's such an important thing and uh, it's so hard to write anything that, that, that you're satisfied with yourself, I think, let alone anything that other people might like. And... Uh, I, you, know, you just have to be again ready when, when the moment's there. You know, so I think when 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 you're in the groove, when the ideas are flowing, then you can do it. I suppose maybe a deadline as well doesn't it? Doesn't hurt. And who have you both liked as artists that where you go? These are my. I was on a classic, stereotypical question on a desert island. <laughs> this is the kind of. These are the kind of artists I'd either like there with me or their music uh, to to be around as well. Uh, I, I, you know, all sorts of things really. I suppose from a songwriting point of view, I do like a lot of the, the famous old songwriters, uh, you know, Dylan and Joni Mitchell and Paul Simon, people like that. Again, lyrically, I think they're as good as anything that there's, there's ever been. I like a lot of the, 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 the old uh, the writers from the sort of 20s and 30s, people like Cole Porter, I think they're absolutely sensational. Again, you won't get better lyric writers and you'll never get better chord structures. I mean, occasionally Joni Mitchell, but uh, but. So the, the, the new music inside out, they were writing for singers who, who were virtuoso singers who could sing anything, so they, they weren't limited by the, the, the techniques at all. And uh, I mean, you know, I was practically brought up listening, watching old Sinatra films and kind of listening to the music, and uh, that's as good as it gets to me, I suppose. But you know, I'm really an indie kid, I suppose. I like now, I like bands like The National, and uh, you know, I used to love Radiohead and all those kind of yeah. things, so. Uh, you know, again, I think it's you know, anyone who's got sad songs to sing, really, that'll do me. You know? And yourself? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, my musical tastes are massively varied, and, and through the uh, through 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 my life, I've kind of gone through phases. I listen to still listen to quite a lot of classical music. Uh, out of kind of more modern bands that are, that are kicking around, I, I I really like a band called Death Cab for Cutie. Uh, I like uh, all Wilco stuff. I think Jeff Tweedy is an absolute you know kind of genius. Uh, I like. Buffalo Tom, Bill Yanovich, uh, you know, kind of crazy. Kind of, any anybody who can write a, write a decent song, basically. And I think a lot of artists uh, that are still kicking around that that uh, from from the eighties. I mean, I was I was an eighties kid really. I, I, I liked the electronic music, uh, Depeche Mode and OMD and bands like that, and, and bands that are still going and are still making 
making music and writing quality songs. For me, this it's the songwriting that's the that's the key thing. Well, so, I would concur absolutely with that. That my uh, producer always goes, it's all about the songs. You know? And if people want to hear about you guys, I want to know where you're playing, what you're putting out. What's the best way to get hold of you? Uh, it's a bit like the A team actually. You have to know where we are, kind of thing. That's predictive, but yeah, I suppose Facebook. I mean, I've, I've got a Facebook page which is uh, Blue Sutcliffe Music, so you can find uh, find us on there, and I'll probably remember to update it uh, before uh, this goes out. And uh, yeah, so I mean, anything we're doing will we'll go up there, mate. Yeah, it's very very early days. For, yeah, I mean, for we've, us, we've been jamming for a few weeks, like yeah. I said, and uh, yeah. uh, it just we like a bit of jeopardy, you know. We like the idea of just seeing what happens, and uh, you know, Andy's a good musician; he can just. You know, when I when I go off piece, they can join in and uh, you know they enjoy the ride, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for coming uh, to be on Music of the Head and Heart. We're going to hear uh, some of your tracks, so we uh, look forward to that. And um, for people who are interested in finding out, then check these guys out on Facebook. Um, I've seen Boo play before, and he's great performance. So it'll only be enhanced by um, Andy. Thanks for dropping oh, by, guys. Cheers, eh? One. Voices of it talking to you still Telling you now what you wanted to hear When presence lied when the world stood still Can you hear me? Bobby, was it absolution? Are you feeling kind of proud? Bobby, did I ever tell you that you talk too much? Talk too loud Can you hear me? The we love The ones we love The most Why is it All my Stupid thoughts Why is it now But we always Keep it locked Inside Too much trouble just to look the other way Bobby, can you hear the voices? Do you know what they think? Can you hear what they say? Can you hear me? We love the ones we hurt the most Why is it in our mind? Stupid thoughts, why is it now? We always keep it locked inside. There's no need to apologize. The answer's right here in your eyes. Always. Why 
is it now? We always keep it locked inside. This is a song called Meet Me In. Just when I thought it stopped, it had only begun. That darkness that comes in the night won't be undone. The heart is a muscle. Been wasting away for too long. Twenty nine thousand days in a heartbeat, or eternity lost in a song. Meet me in Beijing, cause this is the thing. I've seen the future, and I think it might suit you. Meet me in Giza, where the centuries disappear. Those pyramids speak to me in a language I need to hear. And all that jazz won't get you down. Second chance to so meet me in Highgate where there's beauty in being late, there's peace for the restful and the last word in terms of faith. Meet me in Brooklyn. There's a sight makes my soul sing Take the bridge back to Gotham Either way you just gotta run And all that jazz won't get you down And all that jazz won't get you a second chance
Just when I thought it had stopped, it had only begun. This song's called Promises.
was so young, wanting nothing from the past. I threw the caution to the wind. I wasn't so I was so bold, feeling everything was lost. I threw it all overboard. Caution to the wind I was in a song 